am here to make a very bold prediction <laughs> as it stands today. You can, you can hold this over my head. But in my opinion, if things do not change quickly, I do not believe Kang Dynasty is going to make a billion dollars. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we had a lot to say, especially me. I had a lot to say regarding the, the potential of this movie. I was very excited for this movie. I was, I was very excited to see Kang, Jonathan Major's performance, and where things would go from here. Brian, if I had to, uh, so many people have been asking me, Freddie was asking me, I said, you, you want to know what I had to say? Go watch the show. Because <laughs> I want to save it for this. I haven't spoken to anybody regarding my feelings towards this movie. Because you said something that, that was very powerful that I said to Freddie and Freddie was like, oh my God, <laughs> really? I'm like, yeah. Uh, but there was someone else who gave a review of their what they felt about this movie and i felt it was right on he stated ant-man and the wasp quantum mania is clunky and never develops into anything meaningful or consequential for our heroes nor the story at large at least at least at least for the moment at least for the moment Brian, I'm going to be honest with you. For the first quarter of this film, I fell asleep. I was dozing off. So I wanted to be into this film. I started waking up when things were leading towards the introduction of Kang. Uh, but to be Kurt, I was disappointed at what... Uh, this movie was compared to what I thought it could have been. And I was watching uh, another person review cosmic wonder. He was reviewing the, 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 the movie and he said something which I, it was hard for me. It, it was hard for me to disagree or agree with at the moment because I hadn't seen the movie. I thought he was just making a complaint in terms of not enough Kang. And then after the movie, Brian, I was like, yo, not enough Kang. Brian, your overall thoughts on this movie? I'm conflicted. And to be clear, you and I deliberately did not have any exchanges about this movie after you saw it. I have only, I saw it a few hours ago, so it's very fresh in my mind. I'm going to go back and see it again in a couple of days. But I will tell you this. In the plus camp, maybe this is blasphemous. I like this better than some of the stuff we got last year. I actually enjoyed it start to finish more than Multiverse of Madness and more than Love and Thunder. Agreed. But I think... Part of the reason I feel that way is that it was a little more consistent. Its highs were not as high as the best moments in those movies. Yes. It's just the lows weren't as low. And so I kind of found myself like, I'm along for the ride. Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay here. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with this. And then I walk out of the theater and I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, yeah. This is fine. And in the back of my mind, I'm like Scott Lang walking down the street at the end. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, Marvel's in trouble. Yeah. Marvel's in real trouble. Like, real trouble. Like, like he was he's like mentioning Kang's name in his head. And I'm like, yo, they're in real trouble. Yeah. Like, I agree with you. It's fine, but I think. The groundswell around this movie is telling you the slippery slope is starting to pick up some speed. 
Yeah. And this movie is not going to be fine, is not good enough to stop that from becoming a bigger problem. So tell me, Brian, let's let's talk about some of the things that we did enjoy before we get into the things that we didn't enjoy. Brian, I did enjoy, obviously, Jonathan Major's performance. Um, there's really nothing more to say other than uh, there was a statement that I said in, 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 that I said in another show where, you know, this movie, he has to be fantastic in order for, for it to, him to be the, be the one to carry this film. And I think he did that. I went back, it's funny, I was on a flight this week, and I rewatched Devotion, which is his Korean War aviator drama with Glenn Powell. Recommended. I have not seen Creed 3 yet, but I heard a podcast with someone I respect who has seen it and said he's incredible in it. And so I, I take that at face value. I put that with this performance. I put that with this with devotion. I put this with He Who Remains and Lovecraft Country. If Jonathan Majors doesn't win multiple Oscars in his lifetime, something went changed. really wrong. Yeah. Went really wrong between now and then. That's how good he is. He's almost too good, to be quite honest. I don't, that was, he almost is so good in some of the scenes. He's not even in the same movie. And it's like, yeah. it, wow. it was, it was almost, it's not his fault. It's like, you're doing Shakespeare and everyone else is kind of in middle school drama. Like, not, it's not fair really to like the talent of, of like Paul Rudd, but you know what I mean? You get my yeah. point. Yeah. He's holding the gravitas. He's holding you in his hand in some of these lines to where you're like, Nobody's nobody's playing at that level, you know. It's it's Michael Jordan at the local Y. Like, it, it just and that's kind of how I felt. I Man. I felt like he did everything he could. I thought the we'll get to the part. I didn't love how his part was written, especially in the final moments of this. Yes, 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 yes. And it made me wonder. I immediately started thinking through, like, okay, did they make the right call? having him in this movie and then i started trying to go back and saying like okay if he wasn't in this movie where would you have put him could he have been better used in another i it's tough i do have a candidate i'll talk about it again later but it did make me question the decision to launch the villainous kang from the quantum realm and have ant-man be the vehicle for that after I saw how powerful he was with his lines and then feeling so unsatisfied with how he was, his part was kind of resolved in the third act. Let me ask you this, Brian. I know we might, we might uh, go on a little bit of a tangent here, but I have to ask you this, Brian, did you find yourself hoping or not hoping, but wishing this just would have been a Kang movie? So what I settled on, um, if, if I, if I had, a, if I had, <laughs> if I had Kang's ship and I could go anywhere I want and redo this timeline, I think I would have put Jonathan Majors and Kang in Multiverse of Madness and rewritten that movie. There's just something about, I know what they wanted to do. I know they wanted to give Ant-Man his shine. I know they wanted to lean on Paul Rudd because he's one of their proven commodities. I just think it failed the believability test in the end. It brought yeah. Kang down too much to Ant-Man's level. Whereas you put him up against some combination of Wanda and Doctor Strange in another movie that would have been multiversal. I just think you get the stakes of that movie go up and I feel like the opposition is more even. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more adult and it's more believable. And if they had come up with a mechanism whereby he was trapped somewhere in that progression and you scrap the whole, you know, sort of Illuminati fan service, you just got rid of all that. You got even get rid of America Chavez. I don't care. Just like take all that out yeah. and just say the main thrust of 
Doctor Strange 2 is to introduce you to cinematic multiversal storytelling and launch Kang from some sort of trapped point in in the incursions in the universe. I have a feeling that that might have worked a little better than what they tried to do here, even though I get what they were going. Yeah. Ryan, you pointed out something very uh, interesting that, I'm, that as you talk, I'm thinking about it. You're right. It felt like two different movies when Kang, Jonathan Major, was on screen. And then when he was not on screen, then you get into some of the goofiness that was MODOK and, and just some of the lines here. It, it, it just feels like two different movies and and one is interesting and one is not, you know? And and, and I'm wishing that the, the interesting part was, I wish this just would have been a, they should have introduced Kang from, from a long time ago, Brian. The same sort of treatment that Doom should get, you know? But well, that's the funny thing is, and maybe we'll see more of it, but like as Kang was giving his exposition for how he was exiled here, I was like, can I see that? Can I see the battle amongst the Kangs by which you were exiled? Are we allowed to see that movie? Because that is out of the movie. That's a movie right there, Brian. <laughs> how did he end up here? Yeah. And and then maybe you do Quantum Meaning. Then it's a different movie. But whatever. They've done what they've done. Brian. So Jonathan Majors, we agree, was fantastic. He carried the film. Um, were there any other aspects of this film or characters that you thought uh, did uh, uh, was a good performance? I thought Michelle Pfeiffer also fit into that, to, into that uh, other movie that was good. Yeah, no, look, I mean, I, I think Michelle Pfeiffer was excellent. She obviously got more of a role. She got to be very active. She had some action set pieces. It's like a good reminder that, you know, even even in sort of the twilight of her career, she's still a phenomenal actress. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I thought Paul Rudd was fine. I actually thought he had less to do here than I expected. You know, he kind of was out of the movie for more of it than you. I, they split the characters up to where it was like he wasn't even on screen for a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, Michael Douglas also felt kind of underutilized a little bit. Like he had kind of this big return moment with the ants, spoiler alert, but it almost didn't feel earned. It was like, oh, we just need it. We need another heroic army. So let's just grab some ants and have him come strolling in. And it was like, Brian, I have was, a big he, problem. He looked like he looked like he, you know, Michael Douglas is Michael Douglas. Like he has a presence when he's on screen, but it didn't feel like he had as much to do. Um, that's what it felt like to me. It felt like you have this family that they're trying to pitch to you, but they almost didn't know how to write the entire family. That's a key word and the, here. And the, part got, the part they wrote a lot for, the part they wrote a lot for is the one I like the least. For her, right? Cassie, I'm out. Catherine Newton, thumbs down. That was way more Black Adam kid than it was. Oh, snap. Tom Holland. Oh, snap. It Am I you, wrong? Brian, did it, did it have to be her, Brian? Couldn't it have been Hank Pym obsessed with the quantum realm, still messing around and getting them into this situation? Hank Pym being selfish with his tech and just trying to discover what the quantum realm was. But no, it was her. She had to be the one to do this. I was going to say, well, why couldn't it have just been Hank Pym's effort to get his wife out of the quantum realm that had unforeseen consequences. Why do they even have to have another, you know, in, like obviously Janet Van Dyne was trapped down there forever. Like, why didn't they just tie those things together? I, I don't, to me, the Cassie Lang part, I found offensive and like, these are going to be strong words. I, they're trying to force feed young Avengers. I thought this part was terrible. I thought Catherine Newton was terrible and I was cringing in my seat when she was when giving that speech. Her. Oh my God. I was <laughs> like, so, somewhere Tony Gilroy is sitting back with his feet on the desk saying, yo, really? This ain't how it's done. <laughs> like, <laughs> None of, that's the problem, Brian. A lot of these things that they were trying to do didn't feel earned. I didn't care about those creatures down there. You know, I didn't care about that girl, whoever she was. I, I didn't care for a lot of it. A, a lot of it, Brian. I, her speech was like, oh, my God, can we like really? This is what it felt like. 
the 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 rock sign, yo. Yeah, it was the kid in Black Adam. That's what I said. That's what I kept thinking about. I was like, this is pretty awful writing to make this the inspire. You know, and like, and then in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm remembering the, like Marva's speech, and I'm remembering Kino Loy's speech, and I'm like, this ain't this is like big leagues and minor ball, minor league ball, man. It's not even comparable. Yeah, I hated the part, and I felt like I got to be honest, I felt like, you know, Disney's getting criticism for a number of things. And I thought this part is going to feed into it because it felt like pandering to that generation. Is that P word like, again? Yeah. I'm, tell me I'm wrong, but like, even the way, like why she's in jail, like what got her there, you know, she's fighting the evil police state. And then like, she's the, the rabble rouser trying to, you know, rally the, you know, rally the homeless down in the quantum realm. I'm like, you're trying to get that young audience so desperately by putting her up on a pedestal and it's not working. And granted, call me the crotchety old guy who's not in the generation you're aiming at with that character, yeah. but I just found it awful. I've seen it before. We should help. We're heroes. At least I'm doing something with my life. Like, I mean... I really, this is what I... So, well, it's tough because Marvel have done a pretty good job of casting, and they've done a pretty good job of casting female parts. And it's like, you look at what Florence Pugh gave you, you look at what even like Dominic Thorne gave you, and then you look at this, and you're like, uh, no. You have to ask yourself, who's saying yes to this? Right? Yep. You got to ask us, you got to say, Kevin is certainly a part of this. He's saying yes to this. Yep. He has to say yes to this. Sure. I don't, I don't know what's going through his head, Brian, when he looks at this and he says, this is dope. I can't imagine. Like, is anyone not saying to him, yo, this is not dope? Or is there, are we in a room full of yes men? Or is that, is that what's happening right now? Where nobody can say, yo, this is this is not this is not it. This story is not it. Oh. This joke is not it. It has the feel of, like I said, it has the feel of we need this character to be a certain archetype aimed at a certain audience. Reverse engineer that for us. No matter what it does to the story. That's what it feels like when I was watching it. It's the thing I like the least about the movie. Brian. I didn't like some of the Taken movies, but I believed that the, the his daughter, even though she, I didn't like her character, but I believed her. <laughs> These characters, I'm not believing in, Brian. You mean to tell me you walking around like nothing? The biggest thing that ever happened to you as a kid was this that B thing that tried to kill you right when you was a kid. And now you're in the quantum realm and you're walking around like you going to the corner store. But, but that's, but that's not even it. This is the, um, this is again, this is bad writing. This is when you, and that's why I, one of my biggest concerns is that this guy's writing Kang dynasty. Um, but <sighs> we've had this happen a couple of times now where you're taking these younger generation characters and you are skipping all the intermediary steps to greatness. Like yeah. let's go back to Tony Stark's life story and he's a prodigy, right? He's portrayed as like, this guy is as smart and as talented. Not everybody's a genius. Groomed from birth by his father to do what he can do. Right. And he had to go to MIT. He had to do all this stuff. He had to go through years years of being the ceo to only be humbled to where when he builds the mark one in the cave it's believable because he has like 30 pedigree years yeah. of education engineering and skills where he's like when faced with my survival can i put all that to the test cassie lang in this movie says yo dad while you were gone i started messing around <laughs> and look, look at me i'm talking to the quantum realm come on yeah that's not believable we got all these geniuses walking around i mean i don't know maybe we don't have a hero problem they can maybe they all can just kind of defeat kang and thanos and whoever else they got in you know in an instant i don't know but it, it's it just, just felt like we're skipping all these steps and we're supposed to believe that she is 
this next level. And I mean, that's the thing. Like Hank Pym's sitting there. How many decades does the Hank Pym have to go through to get to the Pym particle? And like he sees this girl come up with some next gen tech in like minutes. I don't know, Brian. That's bad writing. It's bad writing. It's bad writing, but it's also. I'm sorry, poor decision making on the on, on the parliament. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree. To sit, to, to, down. Yeah, to, it, to read this and be like, yeah, go, let's go with it. Like, who's who's laughing at this and saying this is funny? Don't put me in a room in there and tell me that's funny. There were some funny moments. Yes, I, I agree 100%. I think one of the funniest moments, Brian, where I laughed the hardest was the Dungeons and Dragons uh, trailer <laughs> with that kid I, the, the, uh, I, that was making the, the... You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I think that movie looks whatever, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, yeah, it's like they're trying too hard, Brian. They're trying too hard. It's like they're going back to the formula. Like I, I think somebody gave up, and let's go back to what we used to do, right? And that going back to what we used to do is not working. And, and if you're going back to what you used to do, you're going about it in a lazy way. Because I don't, I don't, ju I just don't understand. My God, we had Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Endgame, No Way Home. Doctor Strange was dope. Your Iron Man, Thor, the first one. Civil War, Homecoming. You had a lot of good movies in there. Guardians, of the you have a lot of good movies. What happened? Black Panther. What happened? Well, I mean, I think you know. I think one thing, and I said I, my lead at the top was that I actually enjoyed this more than some of the ones last year. That's probably not coming through the comments here. So I did want yeah. to circle back to why did I actually, in the moment, kind of enjoy it. And like I said, I, the thing that I did like was that they didn't. The story's pretty simple. Like it's almost to a fault. But like as a result, it, you know, you 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 made the comparison of like. Kang being interesting and some of the other stuff being uninteresting. I, I would rephrase that. I would actually say the difference is that Kang's weight is enormous and the other stuff is light. And that's kind of more the imbalance that's the yeah. problem. But I actually kind of enjoyed the pacing of this, like because this movie was not long. Mm -hmm. It did always feel like we were moving forward. It did always feel like, okay, like we're progressing toward Kang and we're, you know, the tangents like the Bill Murray cameo were not. 12 minutes they were three minutes so I, I i did like the pacing i felt like i was like along with it as opposed to in strange and in love and thunder it felt like i was being yanked around it was like i'd get a cool scene and then i'd get 10 minutes of something that i just had no like i didn't have any interest in or made no sense this one yeah. to me like fit together as a contained individual story a little bit better but to your point it it just it just did not connect like emotionally along the way, the way it probably wanted to and clearly was trying to. And only Kang kind of gripped you. And maybe a little bit to your point, like Michelle Fiverr, maybe a little bit of Paul Rudd. You know what I actually was reminded of? And I, I, and I don't know if you had the same thing. I read a lot of reviews that were like, oh, there's a huge Star Wars vibe yeah. in this movie. I didn't yeah. get that. I actually didn't I did. get that. I did. Okay. So you know what, but you know what movie this did remind me of, and it's not necessarily a compliment, but it really like I thought visually, creature tech, and just sort of like the way it was designed remind it reminded me of John Carter. I didn't even like, see that movie, movie, Brian. Um, I I, I did get reminded. Of, I felt like I was reminded of Jar Jar Banks a bit. Uh, but other than that, uh, it definitely had a feel of Star Wars sort of look, but. I mean, I get what people are saying. They go to yeah. like a canteen, they go to a bar, and then like the, his ship is kind of like the Death Star, and here are all the stormtrooper troopers. They're, I get it, the rebellion against the Empire. I'm just saying the look of it. If you've yeah. never seen John Carter, that's fine. You should go back and check it out because I feel like the creatures and the, the way they drew looked very similar to that movie, which was a Disney movie yeah. um, 10 years ago. So that that's actually what I was reminded of. Although... Well, I didn't love so we had the visuals in this. I don't know how they were for you. I felt I had like an uneven experience. I had a very good theater, like very new theater. There were scenes that looked pretty good, like the CGI was fine. And then there were scenes that looked awful. Like there were scenes where they're like walking along, and I'm like, this is so obviously two dimensional. And there's a green screen behind you. I can literally see the cutout around yeah, your head. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I was like, I'm watching like a, a B movie on the sci fi channel. But then there were moments where I was like, this is better than what Marvel's been doing. So 
I don't know how you felt about the visuals, but it was very like that was kind of up and down for me over the course of the film. I think the visuals were fine for me. Yeah, there were some instances of where, you know, I mean, they used the volume for this from what I heard. Um, oh, you can tell. Yeah. So, I think you can so, tell where it is. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's to be expected, you know. Um, I think Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was worst, right? Because uh, you can definitely tell the artificial lighting was there and all this other stuff. But... I would, for me, Brian, to, uh, to be honest, obviously the VFX are important, but it wasn't the thing that bothered me about this film. It, it was just... No, I, I, yeah. yeah. It was, was just... It was just... The, 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 the attempts at jokes at certain times. Cassie, I just didn't like at all. She was just... Uh, if you took her out this film, like she was captured and, and she was just in the dungeon for the whole movie, I'd be fine with that. That's what I thought she was going to be. I thought she was going to be more like sidelined and really just the vehicle and the emotional drive for Paul Rudd to do what he did. I, I never anticipated that she was actually going to be the hero, yeah. really, the driving hero yeah. of, uh, of, of this narrative. So I, I didn't care. For, and, I, and like, I got to say, like, I really missed Michael Pena. I, I, I think not having that was essential. Like they were essential parts of what made Ant-Man different and entertaining mm -hmm. and i really wish they would have if they were going to suck everyone into the quantum realm why not find a way to suck him in and the, and, and the crew along with him you know i feel like that would have added um more natural humor uh to to the story yeah yeah if, if they would have if they would have had him in there freaking out uh and just have her imprisoned by kang for the rest of the movie then we probably would have had a better movie, but it's like Brian is like it's already it's in the past. It's done. What's done is done. Yeah. Now we got to deal with now we got to deal with what we have in front of us. Brian, box office wise, does this movie make a profit, and does it make a? A statement as towards where the MCU is heading. Oh, it'll make a profit. Um, you know, the budget I think was around like 150 ish. Uh, it's going to even the numbers I've seen. It's probably going to make about 100 million dollars over the Friday to Sunday period, and maybe about 110 to 125 over the four day holiday weekend. That's domestic. So you're probably looking at a 250 to 275 million dollar global open. That'll put you easily up into like the 600 to 700 range, and that'll more than make enough money. But keep in mind that Ant Man 2 was at 622 global. Yeah, yeah. So this, I, I think this movie is not going to step up massively off that. I think it might be a bit better than that, but you know, with, when you factor in inflation and ticket prices, it's actually not going to be that much bigger of an audience. So I think it still qualifies as Marvel in a slump and Marvel in a, you know, on a downslope and, you know, Marvel with some growing concerns because, you know, this was, this was, this was the beginning of stage five. This, we were promised, this was the kickoff. We were promised that this is where Marvel would stop messing around effectively and launch us on this arc towards secret wars. And I think as far as that goes, this was kind of like a kick out of bounds. Like, I don't know if it was like, you know, like it's not like the, not like the other team ran it back for a touchdown, but you know, they're not, they're not, be they're not beached, you know, they're, they're, so I just think it was like a, it's fine. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm not going to give it a terrible rating. It's yeah. okay. But it's to me like, okay. Marvel doesn't need okay right now. Yeah. I was, I was hoping for, for, I mean, I'm not going to give my rating now, but I was hoping for uh, uh, just a better movie, Brian. And it just didn't deliver on on the many aspects i was hoping for it to deliver uh far are gone the days where you know it's like when i see those videos of cheering at the theaters for certain movies and certain characters yeah. and certain things uh, I, I, now i just feel like i'm just going to the movies to see a movie you know uh well that that i think that's why i say like this movie this movie existed in a much narrower band for me and in some ways that made it more enjoyable to watch but less memorable in, in the mm -hmm. aftermath mm -hmm. because other than kang's dialogue 
which is really the best part of this movie. Even like, you know, Doc Strange 2 has the music note fight. Thor Love and Thunder has the black and white fight. That there are fun. scenes that if you see the movie on TV and you're like, oh, that scene's coming up, you'll pause to probably watch those for five minutes, even though the rest of it, you're like, whatever, I can take it or leave it. <laughs> I don't think this movie has a scene like that. What is the scene in this movie where you're like, these five minutes I'm going to watch 20, 30, 40, 50 times over the next couple of years? I don't know that there is one. I certainly do like when Kang makes his first appearance and he starts talking to Scott Lang and MODOK interrupts him and he gets pissed. He certainly carried that gravitas and he felt like Kang the Conqueror, right? Uh, and I was looking for more of that. And, 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 and we just, I feel for me, we just didn't get enough of it. I think this movie should have been his movie, uh, similar to how they did Thanos. Thanos was the guy in that movie, right? Um, I just feel like the other characters... With some of the characters, they were. It's just, it just keeps. It's a continuing issue here, Brian. Where we have these characters that we don't care a damn about. On the hero side. Yeah, that's on crazy. the hero side. It's... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I, Brian, do you see Disney looking at this as a? Disappointment based on some of the adjectives they have chosen to describe this film. Oh, absolutely. I don't think Disney contemplated that this would be the second worst critically reviewed film that Marvel's ever made. I don't think that ever crossed their mind. And I'm seeing like the early audience scores are lower. So this looks like another one with a cinema score might be B, B plus. I don't think Marvel anticipated that as the kickoff to stage five. And that's why I say Marvel's in trouble. Now, I weirdly feel like the critics actually are underrating this movie a little bit. Like I actually, it's weird. I can, critics in Marvel movies are always weird to me because I feel like, you know, they, they gave a generally positive review to Black Widow, to Multiverse of Madness. And I'm like, that's, those movies are massively overrated in my opinion. Those are not good movies. Okay. This movie, on based on the ratings, you're like, this is a bad movie. And I'm like, I don't think this movie's terrible. Like, I think it's actually, I think those movies are a lot closer in quality than the critical scores would lead you to believe. I agree. But, but the reception more broadly to this is lukewarm. And that's a problem because this is kind of saying, when you take Multiverse of Madness not making a billion dollars after all the hype coming off of No Way Home, and then you take this movie going to make like 600, 700 million as the launch pad. That's why I say Marvel's in real trouble. Because what it's kind of saying underneath is that audiences are not buying into the multiverse saga as a linchpin storyline. They're just not. Like for what, It's not connecting with them the way that the Infinity Saga did. And that's why I'm like, I, you know, listen, I, I am... I'm here to make a very bold prediction <laughs> as it stands today. You can, you can hold this over my head, but in my opinion, if things do not change quickly, I do not believe Kang Dynasty is going to make a billion dollars. I'm taking the under. Based upon what I see today, and the perception to Marvel, if they do not change the course they're on, I think that movie will do south of a billion dollars. I think we need to hold for that discussion in our next show. <laughs> because it's discussing the future, Brian. It's discussing the future because I want to get into where do we go from here? And what does course correcting look like? What, the, what do you think the audience wants? You know, these are questions that perhaps Marvel themselves are having an issue with. Because if you hear them talk about their movies, they talk about, oh, this is The Godfather. Oh, this is Endgame type level. 
It ain't hitting like that. Nope. And 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 you're being blasphemous when you try to put these things in the same sentence. Right? So what are they not seeing? And that's what we have to discuss in 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 our, our sec in our, in the next show. But okay. here's what let me just I, as I watch these movies progressively, the and in, and in theory, th stage five, the culminating movie is supposed to be Thunderbolts, a movie which I don't have a lot of interest in right now, mm -hmm. which is again looking pretty risky. But the the irony is, I watch these movies and I'm like, you know what? I really want to see. A Thunderbolts type movie. I just don't want to see it with the Thunderbolts. You know who I want to see it with? I want to see it with Kang, Namor, Gore, Wen Wu. I want to see them team up because those characters are a hell of a lot more interesting yeah, than right? any of the heroes yeah. or anti heroes. If you want to have a team of bad guys, those are the characters and the performances that are holding my interest. Yeah. And like that, that's a problem. Like that's a, Marvel's gone from having a villain problem to having the villain villains be too good, quite yeah. honestly, relative to the heroes. Yeah. How do we correct that? And we'll talk about that in our next show. Uh, but Brian, anything else? Uh, I mean, okay, so out of five, where what do you give it? You know, like I said, I, I didn't hate it in the end. I settled on two and a half. I kind of look at it as Jonathan Majors by himself is a star. <laughs> like, he just him alone is one. And then I think, like I said, at least the narrative is somewhat consistent. You know, you take Pfeiffer plus Rudd. That kind of, that works enough for me to get to this to be kind of right in the middle. Like, two and a half, right? It's not, it's definitely not terrible. It's not Morbius. Yeah, It's yeah. definitely not epic. So it's not four star, five star. It's right in the middle. It's fine and it's okay. We did, and the thing is, we didn't even talk that much about Modoc because, quite honestly, I, I just kind of it kind of came and went for me, which is sort of a shame. I hear you. I hear you, Brian. The whole Modoc thing. Some of it had me interested, but just the way they ended that and the way they made him look, and it's like not the way he looked, but the way they made the way they made his character be and sound and. It's just it, 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 goofiness. Yeah, and having Yellow Jacket be the be the vehicle for that, and then uh, in the category of cringeworthy, who inspires Modok to make his last deed be a heroic deed? It's Cassie Lang, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of harmless. That's sort of my take on Modok. wasn't terrible, wasn't yeah. wasn't amazing. Just didn't yeah. really care that much. Yeah, exactly. Two and a half. Hey, what about you? Uh, yeah, two and a half, two, man. I was thinking, I was thinking, I was almost thinking three, Brian. But you're right. It's, it, 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 the way the critics have split, I've also feel like this is a this is a two and a half for me, and not a three or four or five. And I think this movie just works for me because of Jonathan Major's performance uh, and the suspense to seeing him and 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 seeing him on screen i think that was uh that was the big thing for me and i just wish there would have been more brian and not this nonchalant like it's like nothing amazing feels amazing right not to the characters and not to us and so yeah, it's a two and a half. It was a. It's just for the hype, Brian. That granted, I put a lot of uh, uh, of uh, expectation. I do. Yeah, I think you're gonna you're gonna have to start lowering those. I think. But I'm, it's I'm, I'm, my bars are my bars are down now. So. But it's like Brian. It's what makes me want to go see these films. Yeah, I get it. But with and without it. It's like I might end up not going to see some of these films sometimes now because it's like, yo. Oh, I can tell you one that I can tell you one right now that I'm only gonna go see because of our show, and it's the one that got delayed. Which is Marvel. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we weren't doing this show, I wouldn't see that in the theater. We get into that point, Brian, because they can't continue down this path, making these films 
and I and they just need to rethink or get some fresh new ideas or fresh new people. Nerd Gem Report and I'll just at, at Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're, yeah, we're not really like we're not we're not the writers though. We're like nah, uh, nah, nah. We're, we're like the two old dudes in the Muppets. We can kind of point <laughs> out the flaws from a distance <laughs> when we see them. That's like what we are. <laughs> but, yeah, but I mean, but if we were in the room, Brian, because we would be like, yeah, nah, that's not gonna work. Or, or that the joke. The Cassie Lang thing, I could have we could have thrown ourselves in front of that and been yeah. like, yo, this is this is too big of a leap. Um, yeah, I think I think well, we, you know, the other thing you mentioned more Kang. Well, obviously, so let's talk about it quickly. We did get more Kang, technically, a lot more Kang. Were you excited? Now that was a throwback credit scene in the sense of it wasn't about introducing a celebrity; it was about trying to propel the idea of Kang forward. Were you were you happy with? I was that scene? interested, Brian, because now we saw the true timekeepers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was interested. Where we go from here, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. Hence, Brian, so many people loved the 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 first mid credit scene. I like the second one more. Okay. What did you think about the second one? Because I like that one more than I did the, the interesting. First one. I, I mean, I I like the first. Like I said, I like the first one because of its feel. Like I said, I like that it was just trying to underscore Kang. But like to your point separate kang within kang because i think that's part of the challenge like majors is clearly and i was just excited to see majors playing the characters different ways because I, I can that that i'm not going to get tired of okay so to your point i was excited to see like all right you made some choices here to give us real time keepers these three you know these three that are sort of elevated um and then you kind of gave us the preview of like this is you know i take your pick from cinematic history whether it's like agent smith or whatever you know like this is your your updated version of that and so i'm like yeah, I'm still interested to see where he goes and where this goes, but um, yeah, so I probably would take the first one just for that reason, just because I feel like he is the best part of the movie, and so you left it with the best part of the movie. But I, make the case for the second one, because I think it's a fair one. I mean, you know, we know that we get in Loki very soon. Yeah. And he's going to meet one, two, maybe, I don't know how many Kangs we're going to be meeting. But we definitely see one. And so what I'm expecting, Brian, and why I'm so hyped for this is that the conversations are not going to be goofy. Uh, the dialogue in these, in this, in this series in Loki is going to be much, 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 much different because we're obviously we're getting a different sort of Kang, but what kind of Kang is what has me interested. Uh, and the fact that Loki he himself is, you know, a, a, a great character. That yeah. conversation with Kang, every conversation that Loki has had is there's always a meaning behind it. There's always something yeah. behind it. So I'm looking to hear that banter, that that questioning from Loki, and that and that conversation with Kang. I think that for me is the most exciting part. With the, the mid credit scene that we got. Yeah, we're getting a bunch of Kangs. There's an end game involved, but what is it? We have no idea. We just I, all I know is that we're gonna see a bunch of Kangs. Gonna be different ones. That's it. But with this one, there's gonna be a lot more, I think, to explore, uh, based with this series, but rather than that mid credit scene. So, that's fair. I mean, and, and in fairness, like I said, the thing you like about the second scene again is they stuck with characters you know and moved, you know, and gave you something to move forward. We know that Loki season two has a little bit more of a period piece feel to it. We know they're time jumping through decades and we've seen in the costumes on set, 70s, 30s, 40s. Like, so this one, I don't think we knew about the 30s. I think this was like older than we thought, mm -hmm. but like, I think that's good. I think they did not, by not putting in like another A-list celebrity, I think they really did themselves a favor here to keep us interested in the TV show. So I totally agree with that. So yeah, my, it, it, I probably would have to give, that would be one of the stronger points to this film for people is that there's two credit scenes that are actually worth sticking around to see. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of uh, Ant-Man. And the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Brian, what'd you think of the Wasp? I think the fact that we didn't mention her is actually appropriate. Um, as I said, I think the way I summed it up was at the start when I said they were trying to write the family, but didn't seem to know how to write the whole family. 
Yeah. And so I feel like Evangeline Lily just didn't have a lot to do. Like you kind of got caught up on her life in the in the opening exposition that that Paul Rudd was giving you, and after that, like her lines are basically like, "Mom, why didn't you tell me?" And then kind of we gotta say we gotta help Scott, yeah. and she kind of has her little bit of action shine. But again, it just felt like Cassie Lang was crowding so many of these other characters. Right? It was like whatever. Evangeline Lily had to do and say was left on the cutting room floor. It felt like Michael Douglas probably had a number of lines that were left on the cutting room floor. And, and, and quite honestly, he probably even got less Kang and less Ant Man because of that. I just, it just felt like this was really meant as a vehicle for Cassie Lang yeah. on par with Kang. That's kind of what it felt like to me. And I was like, that's just not a great creative decision as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this movie. We had a lot to say. Let us know what you have to say about this movie. Did you like it? Oh, what? Out of five, what do you give this movie? Let us know. We want to hear your thoughts uh, because this movie has a lot of people split. Um, you know, our yep. bar is kind of high, as it should be, Brian because we've gotten some great stuff and we want to get back to that greatness. We're not there. We're not there. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you next time on the gym report. Okay. What do you mean?